What's up guys, Coach Nate here and Dr. Kyle, the esteemed Dr. Kyle. We are talking about uh, plantar fasciitis, are we talking plantar fasciitis today? Exactly. We're talking about plantar fasciitis injuries today. We're gonna give you some exercises and some assessments just to see if you're someone who's dealing with that pain, where that pain is coming from, as well as how to fix it, so stay tuned. So guys, I'm gonna let you in a little secret. We've been having some microphone issues all day as I get a little sunburn here. This is probably the third or fourth time we've tried to shoot this. So I'm gonna to try to have the same amount of original surprise and interest as I did when we went to the first time. So Kyle, what is plantar fasciitis? <laughs> and where may it experience pain? It's, it's good to be talking about this for the first time. Right? For the first yeah. time. All right, so plantar fasciitis, uh, very common if, if you've been running for any significant amount of time, chances are you've, you've had bouts of it. It's gonna be basically pain right where the attachment point for all of this connective tissue, fascia, and, and muscles are, right kind of on the inside of the calcaneus there. Um, if you've had it, you know kind of some of the classic symptoms, which would be pain getting out of bed in the morning, first couple steps, and then it a lot of times loosens up after that. Uh, pain the first uh, mile or two of the run, and then loosens up and feels okay after that until it's back with a vengeance right when you stop. Yeah, and guys, it's so important just to remember that just because it's loosened up, it hasn't really gone away. It's just sort of like popped its head back down the gopher hole uh, and it's gonna pop back up again until you're playing whack-a-mole and you can't keep up uh, too much. Uh, and this, this next little assessment, we'll be actually talking about uh, maybe some of the connections with our ankle, what's going on there, as well as one of your favorite questions to ask, is this a stability issue or is this a mobility issue? Here we go. Now it might look like we're posing for our soccer team or something else like that. I feel like you should have a ball or like a trophy in hand or something like this. But it's actually the position that uh, Kyle wants me to be in because he's going to be testing range of motion of my ankle. So what are we doing here? So this is a very important screen to be doing. Um, it, it's one that's good too because you can do it on yourself uh, if, if, if you're having some of this pain. And it helps us answer the first question of, all right, this foot pain that we're having, do we need more of a stability correction, which is strength? Um, or do we need more of a mobility correction, which is the myofascial release, flexibility, things like that. That's cool. So this first test is really going to be addressing more of the mobility issue, the range of motion. And what range of motion specifically are we going to be testing and looking at? It's going to be the, the ankle dorsiflexion. So we're looking at this part of the ankle and whether that's restricted due to um, some sort of restriction in the actual joint or very commonly uh, up in the soleus and, and gastroc or capital. And dorsiflexion is my ability to kind of pull my toe back up this way, right? Exactly. And one of the things this is useful for, not only on flatter running, but when I start running uphill, when I start running faster, doing things like that. And if we don't have this, what happens is we either end up on our toes or our feet tend to turn out a little bit and we tend to run this way. So both directions are not ideal whatsoever. So let's go through the test. All right, so first we're gonna be in the, the kneeling position, obviously. Um, we're gonna get correct set up here. So first yep. we want 90 degrees between core and hip, which we have. And I'm gonna bring your foot out just a little bit. So then we have 90 degrees between hip and lower leg and knee there. And then we're gonna go about a fist length out and then Today we're going to yeah. be using our, our handy dandy Boston poster, but a lot of times people go. use like a stick roller. True or false, roller. Kyle, is your name on that poster? It is true. It is My true. Name is on this poster. <laughs> because we are actually filming this the day before Boston. Kyle is going to be going out running. You'll probably, by the time this out, be able to look him up and see how we did. Hopefully crushed it. Hopefully. Either way. Hopefully, yeah. If he but, didn't, he's not going to be on any more videos. Yeah. <laughs> hand to me laying face down on the concrete. Yeah, there, there we go. So, but yeah, so you're gonna go about a fist length out and then using, um, we're using a poster, you could use a, a dowel, you could use a broomstick, stick We're rollers. scrappy around here, we like to grab whatever's around. <laughs> exactly, so uh, now we're set up correctly and I'm gonna have you slowly bring your knee in and try to touch where I have this poster here. And if he can get to that spot without bringing that, the back of the heel up off the ground, he passes the test and we know that uh, more than likely his foot pain is coming from so some I'm, sort of stability. So I have enough range of motion from there. And it's really important guys to do this barefoot or in socks because if I'm in a shoe that has some sort of heel lift and most shoes do, it's actually gonna be giving you more range of motion because this heel's gonna be lifting off the ground that way. So that's why you wanna do this test in barefoot or in socks. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet, so this next little thing, we're actually gonna talk maybe about the stability portion of it and what that means. So I've passed the range of motion side. What are some of the stability things I can look at? All right, so I happen to pass that test for range of motion, but let's say I didn't pass the test. What exercises would you go after? The, the fortunate thing about that is if you fail it, the, the correction for it is, is very, very easy. So you're gonna stay in this position that we did the screening for, and then I'm gonna have you take 
uh, that uh, left arm there and yep. put it right there. Yep, right here. And then you're gonna stretch forward while holding that heel on the ground. Okay, so this left hand here keeps this heel planted. It prevents this from popping up. And then what I can do is just kind of shift this guy forward and spend a little time in this ankle this way. And uh, how long should I should you do this for? How long should I hang out? You can hang out there for anywhere from uh, 15 to 30 seconds. 15 to 30 seconds. And this strikes me as something that's maybe better to do, say, after a run if I'm a little bit warm as De opposed to doing something before I start to run. Definitely. If, if you're going to try to do this before, I would want you already warmed up. I would want you already foam rolled out. We want that tissue warm. We don't want to put any big time stretch into a, a static muscle like that. There we go. So a nice little way if I'm not, if I'm missing this dorsiflexion, surprise, surprise, let's just work on that dorsiflexion. So nice little way to work on that just here. This is just another variation of that sort of calf and ankle stretch. And we're not just going after a specific muscle length. Remember, we're not talking about that. We're actually talking about mobility, the range of motion of that joint itself. And we're gonna stretch out all of the tissue and the fascia that needs to be done. All right, so we've talked first about this range of motion. Is that the issue? And if it or isn't the issue, we wanna also look at my ability to stabilize my body, especially running being this one leg sport. So what's this next test? What are we looking for? So this is gonna help us screen out where the lack of stability is in the foot, which is causing the pain. Um, it's called a, a, a quarter one leg squat test. And, quarter one leg squat test. And it's, it's very important because when we think about running, it's entirely a one leg activity. The entire time you're running, you're either on one leg, on the other leg, or completely in the air. So this is a, a real, uh, real useful one. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. If not, something went more wrong than foot pain. <laughs> there we go. So I'm basically gonna have you balance on that left leg for me. Good, so this is if I'm testing this left foot, mm -hmm. right? So I'm gonna start with this left leg right here. And this is another great one that you can do yourself to kind of test yourself to see whether you're susceptible. And then I'm gonna have you go down and bend that knee maybe six inches and come cool. back up. Come down through here, back up tall. It will probably try to get Craig in here in a second just to get a little bit more of a close up on this foot so you guys can see it. But we're going through, and what am I looking for, or what are you looking for specifically as I go through this little squat? Ideally, when you bend your knee, hips are gonna stay square, the leg goes straight down and straight back up. So I see this alignment where everything stays lined up, and if I start to see, what happens if it doesn't, I start to see some wobbles this way? That's another clue as to what's causing that foot pain. Okay. Very cool. And then what are some of the other things that you might see? Like, let's say, like we were talking briefly about like, so I'm someone who's decent, so I'm kind of passing this, but if I didn't pass this, what might that fail test look like? A fail test would be you go down into that, into that squat, and a lot of times for plantar fasciitis, everything buckles in there. Buckles inward. So all of a sudden, we're starting to see a big collapse this way this foot excessively pronates inwards and that's sort of that issue we're looking for. Exactly. And how is that related to lack of strength? If my foot collapses this way, how is that related to a strength, strength standpoint? Well, that's what kind of takes us to our next level of assessment because more, more, than, uh, more common than not, we're gonna be looking at if you have that collapsing in, stability issue in the small muscles of the foot, stability issues in the medial side or inside of the quad or stability issues up here at the, the glute. Interesting, so kind of this area, this area, and this area all sort of work together. And uh, notice we're not necessarily talking about sticking something underneath the arch of your foot. We're actually talking about your ability for your foot to be strong and stabilized. Exactly. That's really, really cool. Okay, so what is the exercise, say I fail this test and I uh, need to do some stability exercises, what am I doing? Well, so let's say we, we screen out, glutes are fine, vastus medialis or this, this uh, inside of the quad is fine, and it's coming from lack of strength or activation in the intrinsic muscles of the foot. We go over some specific exercises on how to teach those to activate, and that'll point you in the right direction as far as fixing that foot pain. Very cool. So in this next little segment, we're actually going to show one or two of those exercises for you. So we're sitting over here by the light post and we're gonna talk about a little stability exercise. Uh, I'm just watching our mat blow away, no big deal. We'll get it in a second. Uh, what are we doing here? All right, so we went through our screening. We found that the intrinsic muscles of Nate's left foot aren't firing and that's what's causing the foot pain. So we're gonna go through a simple exercise to teach those muscles to start activating. Very cool. Um, so I'm gonna have you balance on that left side. So I'm gonna stand up tall. I'm gonna be balanced here on this left foot and I'm, and I'm using this pole. There's a little, this plays a role. Yeah, right. So as he's balancing, I'm going to have him slowly lean forward from his ankle until right before he loses balance, right before he feels like he's gonna fall into the lamppost there. 
and he's going to learn to feel kind of that sweet spot between maintaining balance and right before he falls forward. That's interesting. Yeah, so I can start to feel that when I start to shift forward, I can start to feel my, my foot uh, a lot more uh, active on tension and I, my toes really have to press into the ground. And then if I start to go too far, then I sort of lose it. My heel comes up off the ground. and So I want to stop right before then. Exactly. Very cool. And you do repeats of that, and that's basically going to teach that, that motor control aspect of giving Do you like muscles. to do this for time, or do you like to do this for a set number of repetitions? Usually a set number of repetitions. If you're new to it, I'd have you do one or two sets of 10 just to kind of get familiar with it, see if you get sore. Mm -hmm. If you get through it just fine, then I would have you increase reps from there. And what if I'm not in this beautiful Boston Common public park with this light post? I mean, what other substitutes could people use if they don't have their own light post to use for this exercise? <laughs> I don't know why they wouldn't. I know. Uh, usually just a wall would be just fine. Just a wall would be fine. So if yeah. you don't have a light post, you could use a wall to do this at home or, or a sterile or anything else. Um, is this good to do on your other foot too, even if that other foot's not necessarily hurt? Yeah, it absolutely is. Just because we're so used to a lot of times being in those big cushy shoes, that it, it teaches some of those uh, important small muscles of the foot to kind of fall asleep and stop working. So it's All a right. great. I love that. Yeah, 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 I was gonna say. So weak, mushy feet, out of there. We'll get some strong active feet in here. We'll get these little wall leans. There you go. Guys, the rumors are true. You can get more Dr. Kyle in your life with some Skype sessions. And uh, if you click this link at the end of the video, it'll send you to a place where you could book a 30 minute online video session where he can do an actual individual uh, injury assessment screen with you. How many of these we've we done so far? We've done by 40 or 50 in the last two months. Yeah, we've done about 40 or 50 of these in the last couple months and they have been so valuable to everyone because he's actually a running doctor who's not going to tell you necessarily to stop running. He's going to work with you, which we think is the coolest thing. Because we also have a really sweet downloadable PDF on uh, injury prevention, a lot of our favorite exercises, a lot of Coach Kirk's exercises distilled down to one place, head to toe, pretty much for everything. All you need to do is to get that is click a link at the end of the video, or there's another link down in the description. Of course, if you like this video, let us know, drop a like. Uh, if you have any comments or questions what we talked about, hit us up in the comment section, and then of course, subscribe to The Run Experience, because we've got so many more great videos coming at you each and every week, and almost each and every day. Once again here, Nate, uh, coming at you <laughs> and uh, we'll catch you in the next video.